besides printmaking and relief printing, which is linoleum cuts, wood cuts, that kind of thing, uh, I worked with fabric a lot in school and in undergrad and grad school and um, had a little bit of a quilting background. So some of that is just another surface for me and some of the textures I think about beforehand and sometimes it's more about what can I do to combine different textures and what will it do. So instead of, when I first started doing the laser cut steel with powder coating, I was doing them by themselves and then realized very quickly that they needed to be combined with my other mediums that I use all the time. Because it gave visually just a, you know, more of a depth to what it was. When I was 18, I moved to Montana and that everything you did was outside. So for 10 years, um, I worked in Yellowstone National Park and then I lived in the kind of north of the park. And you know, when you had a free time, you, you went hiking or skiing or something. And so I think that really gave me a foundation of what was important as far as a cycle of life. When I moved to Montana and stayed, worked in Yellowstone for three years and then decided to go back to school, I took my first printmaking class and it kind of changed everything. One way with printmaking for me was that I could keep drawing. I really wanted to do a lot of drawing and so drawing with printmaking you can reproduce some kind of drawing over and over and over. I like to uh, deal with animals a lot as far as um, kind of how we put our human characteristics on animals and our relationship to them, good and bad, just how that we coexist in this world. Um, and the polar bear came up and wouldn't leave me alone, I guess. I was trained as a printmaker, so relief prints were really what I did as far as printmaking, which you see in really just a few pieces. but. Um, I think the ideas come first and then the material comes with those ideas and then I, if I don't know how to do it, I figure out how to do it. So now I try to see like what can I mix up to, you know, what will happen if you put <clears throat> fabric with or silk with metal or flocking in the bear to rope as in crochet or whatever it is. Right when I finished graduate school in printmaking, I didn't necessarily think about letterpress as being my next uh, job um, but I was looking online there's a couple resources and that you can find old equipment and this press was listed in Hammond Louisiana from a longtime printer so I went to Hammond with all the money I had in the world and ended up buying it for four hundred dollars and then moved to Lafayette moved to Lafayette because I didn't have a place to put it it's 1100 pounds and set up my print shop in my friend's back room because their house is on a foundation. Bought a bunch of type that's out there, outside. And that's what I first used to print on mostly was just the uh, lead type. The show at Lemieux is really about water and about, um, I mean, water sustains us, our bodies are mostly water, but there's a fear of the ocean, and the ocean and the, the sea is very unforgiving, and so it's kind of that balance of something you need a lot of, um, but also it can take you down, and then of course how our world and landscape's changing because of more water and climate change. Sometimes they have a little personification. It's more about how animals and humans interact positively and negatively. Sometimes the animal looks more violent than sweet and soft like the polar bear does. But there's the fox piece that, you know, he's about to bite something. So trying to create some tension in the viewer and not, it, you know, it's not just roses spending a lot of time on the water and on the coast, watching the coast disappear rapidly and visually. And I didn't think I'd be able to, I don't think I ever thought I would see it that fast, but it's very apparent. So there's a few pieces about kind of water taking over. I mean, I think all of it's, I'm personally connected to. 
whether it's thematic or how it's made. And a lot of it has a lot of hands-on embroidery and stitches and one cut at a time and one stitch at a time. So I feel like it's just, you know, a part of me as much as I'm a part of it.